It's been a while. Welcome to Squawking Dead. The two episodes that we're covering are going to be pretty depressing, (laughs) in my opinion, already. And the reason for that is because we're covering basically dire straits situations where people are kind of stranded in the middle of nowhere after this hurricane, and we've got people running out of water, food, getting sick. Uh, We've got optimistic people. We've got people who've lost all hope. And the overall theme of basically the back half of season eight or season four seems to be picking up the pieces, literally and figuratively. So we're dealing with a lot of that. And and I think the ideal here, and I think what's going on here to start, is really that it's kind of like tempering metal. You know, you bang it to kind of make it stronger. So what I'm hoping, at least, is that we come out of this situation in where our character is a lot stronger, hopefully. Although it seems to me that from some of the hints that we're getting from Coleman Domingo, at least, we don't know who's going to be sticking around, how things are going to be after this, these two episodes. But what we do know is that these next few episodes, the remaining few episodes before The Walking Dead, are going to be tense. Uh, so with that, no formal intro. I'm going to be turning it over to Carol. <laughs> so where do we begin? You're out in an island now. <laughs> oh, island on my own. So I think we're going to race through, I don't know, I mean, in my opinion, I think the best way to go about this is probably chronologically, but mm-hmm. then again, these two stories do kind of, they somewhat overlap and then somewhat overtake each other, so mm-hmm. who knows? It's kind of up to you. Mm, I don't know. I mean... It's, it's kind of like the same trope as it's been done before. Like, where is everybody? Oh, no, everybody's scattered. Oh, we have to find everybody. I mean, I'll just say it. I'm, I'm a little annoyed and frustrated with fear. It's, it's okay, but I'm just right. waiting for something. Right now, it just feels like a series of haphazard, random, unfortunate events. And I'm waiting to hopefully see how it all comes together. Because right now, I'm not seeing where it's all coming together or what's the point of all of these random events right so not even that, after the last episode blackjack nah, no okay all right. i mean again it just feels like oh there's a crazy lady on her tail okay surprise, but, but, why, surprise. <laughs> but it's like okay another crazy person why are they crazy you know it's just sort of like especially when they're just out there just being weird for the sake of being weird you know it's it's, I don't know, it just seems like an easy way out to just kind of like, we're going to put a crazy person in there and they're going to be crazy and they're going to try to come and get you. And it's like, okay, but what's the bigger... The bigger picture here. Yeah, and it just seems like a bit of a cop-out, you know? That's that's my only concern. Whereas, like, like it's, it's getting to the point with fear that I'm sort of like, okay, we're up to episode 13, so that means a couple of more episodes and we get to The Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I, I could feel that from you, like from a couple episodes ago. I was like, um, are we just killing time here? <laughs> it just, for me, like fear just feels like it's, it's, it would really need to pull a rabbit out of a hat. Like, because it just, I think it started off strong. And now I'm just sort of like, I don't, I, I, I'm not seeing how it all comes together. And I hope it does in some sort of miraculous way. But it's just hard, you know, with, with something like The Walking Dead that has a huge like story already written basically you know right, and right. you know like oh my well at least for comic book readers you know like this big story and, and where it's going and and you know the, the the approaches and dynamics and thought process and like here i'm just sort of like i don't know you know i just feel like everybody even when you had villains in the walking dead it's just very for the most part i feel pretty thought out our villains they're not necessarily like there's there's sort of like a, a process behind them it's like the governor you know we got a whole backstory on the governor so we know like and we spent a lot of time on the governor so it's like okay you know that's that dynamic and then you know the even with even with terminus you know they, they came and blew it up in a day yes but like you know at the end of the day it's like you know even that you kind of understand it's like hey man's gotta eat like i get it you know so it's like <laughs> a whole you know there's a whole kind of like i'm gonna create a graphic that says terminus a man's gotta eat that's what <laughs> so he said to be the I'm, sign in front that's what they said they still were still pretty ambiguous that's still what they said like yeah, you yeah. know a man's gotta eat and i'm like i get it you know no, like so mental note creating yeah. a graphic <laughs> so it just it just makes sense you know and and with negan again it's like makes sense you know order at all costs you know like I get it, you know, but when you put it in just like, I'm a random crazy person, I'm going to make you strong because I've gone crazy. And it's like, okay, 
All right. I, I kind of see what you mean. Okay, so I, I think I'm looking I, for depth, and then sometimes I feel I feel I'm I'm feeling my frustration with the last episode is that like there was depth where I didn't feel like I needed to see depth, and like in where I wanted to see depth, I didn't see depth. I wanted to, like if you're gonna introduce some new crazy character, it's like okay, well, what's her reason now for why? Like not just like a lone. Basically, it's it's like a lone shooter who just kind of goes crazy. You know what I mean? It's like that's just basically like the way right now she's being portrayed and then you know you'll give strand some long dissertation in his you know very eloquent fashion or whatever and it's like can we give a little bit more depth to the random crazy lady so that she's not random crazy lady like Uh. just you know what i mean it's like well see that's that's kind of what i like about um fear the walking dead and and I, and I can tell what you're trying to what you're, we're trying to describe is basically I I kind of value a a villain that is concrete. Negan is concrete. The governor is concrete. Terminus, yeah. even though it was over really quick, concrete. I know right. where everybody stands. Right. Even if there's like a sympathetic kind of uh, villain, let's say, like even if we can feel sympathetic about it, at least I know. Okay, I'm sympathetic, but this guy's still an asshole. Right. <laughs> you know, like that. But That's I what we're dealing it. with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, but that's the thing I kind of like about Fear the Walking Dead. From the very beginning, um, quote-unquote evil people, like even Troy from season three, whom like a lot of people love, people like mourn the loss of Troy. People have pretty much forgotten about him by now, I think by now, you know, because now they're just more mourning Madison, they're more mourning Nick right now. But but it's, it's the idea that things are still nebulous. You know, people are still malleable. Like they can, uh, they can flow this way and that way. Now, the only difference that I'm seeing with the filthy woman, which we'll call her now filthy, I called her crazy, filthy woman, whatever it was, but is that she, to me, she's a little bit more concrete than we're used to on Fear the Walking Dead. Even the vultures didn't really feel very quote unquote evil, didn't feel very concrete. Mel was kind of charming, you know, he didn't have like malicious, even Ennis as much of a, as of a kind of a, a bro hipster kind of vibe you got from him. He still was kind of, you know, he wasn't that tough guy. He wasn't that threatening, you know, mm-hmm. but, and that's kind of like what I like about it. I like what, that we don't know where these people stand. I kind of like that we don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, I, and I'll, but I'll be really, really honest. I feel kind of what you're feeling only because, and really only because, I think it's tougher to podcast on. Mm-hmm. A, because of lack of source material. Sure, fine. But B, is that it's a journey thing. It's a lot of the episodes of Fear the Walking Dead, at least in the back half, are kind of like a wait and see thing. You know, it, it's kind of like we can project only so much. And maybe this is the first time, maybe in these last two episodes, where we can start to get an idea, uh, where we can start to ask questions that we can answer about the filthy woman, let's say. Because until the last few, we didn't even know she existed. We don't know what's going to happen there really wasn't a thread per se there were people in distress people that had uh, feelings and picking up the pieces and despair and mourning and loss but there really was no backbone to these stories until now until right at the end of blackjack really we start to see this i these ideas coalesce like the the story it's literally like a hurricane right now the hurricane is building, even though the physical hurricane is over, okay? Mm-hmm. The, hur- the winds are starting to swirl around, and now we're starting to see some sort of cyclone, some sort of, like, turbine of winds right now. And now we're starting to see piece together where we can predict this hurricane is going. Before, it was just kind of nebulous. There was, like, a physical hurricane. There were some physical emotions. Things are going this way and that way, but... There's no real underlying story, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's what I, and, and just going back to why, it, it, it makes it really hard to kind of podcast and talk about this stuff because it's kind of aimless. We don't know where things are going. It makes me uncomfortable. Really, me, David Cameo, it makes me uncomfortable covering these episodes because it, it's a lot of its wait and see. A lot of it's kind of letting the story reveal itself, which it makes me feel very uncomfortable. It puts me in a, in a place where I... You know, I, I can watch it and I enjoy it, but it, it's hard to kind of talk about without just saying straight narration and not really have mm-hmm. too many deep thoughts about it, you know, because yeah. there's no backbone. Right. Yeah. You know, so I, I definitely know what you're talking about. Yeah. No, that's how I feel. It's just, it's hard for me to be invested in something that feels a little haphazard, you know, to yeah. me. Yeah, until, I hear you. Until it kind of, whereas like I see previews for Walking Dead and I'm like, oh my God, I can't get here soon enough. 
And right. so it's, yeah. So th that's the thing. It's like I, I'm waiting for there to be more depth, but at the same time, there's only really a couple of episodes left, really. You know, what, three, right? Three episodes yeah. left? 13, so there would be three left, yeah. Yeah. So that's, I, I feel like that's almost a bit too much, like, but in a good way, kind of mm -hmm. like if they're going to finish off the season, three episodes may be just enough to kind of set up the next season mm -hmm. to see where they go. Do they go to Alexandria? Do they do this? Do they do that? Oh, if they resolve the conflict, half of another season journeying somewhere I'm going to <laughs> over a table, like, I, I mean, because time jump. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Let, let's do a time jump there. Yeah, let's use and, that gimmick over and over again. And, and get to a destination. And hey, 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 how about like, where did Luciana come from? How about that? Like, hey, maybe, we... you'll, maybe you'll get that end teaser you wanted. <laughs> in fear, not in The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't know. It's like, I, I have my frustrations about it. But we, you know, what, you know what the thing is? It's like, I think like some of the artistic licensing that they were taking in the beginning was like somewhat amusing, and now thirteen episodes in, I'm kind of like, okay, let's let's get to substance here. Let's get to, let's get to some substance. Like, like it's yeah. kind of like, what is this really about? Right? What is this really about? Right. Like, I, I mean, and, and maybe it's just my old school sort of thing. Like, you know, even patience. <laughs> Well, no, it's like, let's just get to it, man. You know, like, I mean, like the... Um, Is this like the New York part of you? It's kind of like, come on already. We got places to go. I, I, I want to get to... Like, sometimes I feel like, keep it simple, stupid, basically. Like, wow. you know, no, but even like the beginning, like I was talking to a friend of mine about the beginning and she was like, you know, I can't stand the beginning of fear. And I was like... Wow, can't stand the beginning of fear. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're saying the initial seasons or the initial episodes no, of the No, like, like the, the opener, like the, the little theme. Um, oh, theme. yeah. You said that last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can't stand it. And she wow. was like... And I can't either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that. Yeah, yeah the, but, the consistency factor. Yeah. But basically, she's just like it's over in two seconds. It's it doesn't it doesn't have any presence. And you kind of when you make a big stark change like that, which is true, you can't go back. You know, like you can't go back to like the old theme song or or whatever. It's like you kind of made a decision. You got to kind of go with it and say like, okay, we decided to you know revamp the series. We're changing the theme song. It's going to be you know this and every episode is going to be a, a snapshot into what the episode is and it's all meaning something because it's all going to come together in some sort of miracle way like fine okay you know but it's just i mean i get it it's very creative but i feel like sometimes when you get super creative it just kind of can be a little frustrating even like i mean it's it's over but like even madison's death thing i mean her, her quote unquote death or whatever. I mean, if they can pull, they'll pull it out of the hat if she's still alive. But if she really is dead, then that was weak, you know, just because of the fact that, like, weak I know. Sauce? It was like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's like, you know, like, oh, well, we made it, you know, we shot this way for this creativity and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, come on. Like, everybody who watches The Walking Dead doesn't believe anybody's dead unless you see the body. That's right. the protocol. It's protocol. It's <laughs> like, protocol. Well, I mean, they've been flouting protocol the last um, season or so. Or, yeah, two, uh, yeah. I mean, they really haven't... Like, uh, take for what, Heath, Walking Dead? Yeah, like Heath, for Heath example. Heath is still alive. We know he's still alive. He's not oh, dead. We don't he's know. Not this dead. way or that. He's not dead. It, Just like we know Sherry's not dead. Like, that's because true. until you see the body, they're not dead. And they've never been like, oh, yeah, he's dead. No, they've been like, oh, well, you know, there's a story behind that. Like, because they're not dead. Unless you see the body, it's not dead. So, like, fear is, like, on a totally different world where it's like, okay, well, we took these creative liberties and this, and we just wanted to make her death, like, you know, look this way and whatever. Yeah, but she did die and stuff. I'm like, well, we didn't see it happen. So, Well, you don't think you don't think that fear kind of has um, the right to kind of do its own thing? Absolutely. When it comes to stuff, with this Absolutely. Stuff? Yeah, it has its right to do its own thing. I just don't agree with it. But it's like they have its right to do its own thing. <laughs> it just makes sure. me uncomfortable because it doesn't do the, what the other show does or it supposedly does. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, look. Because I haven't seen the body this way or that. So I don't, I I don't know what they're going to do. Andrew yeah, Lincoln's so, leaving. I mean, 
The world so, cats are mating with dogs. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for like Madison to show up in like episode 16, you know, to just basically kind of make it feel like, okay, maybe it was all worth it because she's still alive and she's, I don't know, ahead of new, some new Is that what you, because I don't think that's going to happen. And, uh, no, and it's think- not. And that's what makes me frustrated because if that's not the case and she really is dead, then it's like, well, then that death scene was weak. <laughs> Well I, well, I disagree, but that's I know. But that's that's why. That, that's totally, uh, and I I, I, I can see the course. validity to that point, mm-hmm. completely, honestly, because yeah. because I get it. I have feelings. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that sucked. Yeah. It totally sucked. That was very emotional. You know, the the scene was in slow motion. You know, slow motion makes you feel more emotional. I mean, while well, I was like weak, dramatic <laughs> music. Yeah. See, that's the thing. We have we have different. Uh, yeah, I have a, yeah. I have a heart. So <laughs> I know. I, I that's listen. That's why you know black like my soul. You know, like uh, yeah. I'll tell you, but no. I mean, yeah. Fear has it's trying to pave its own way. I just. Like I said, I just don't know where it's all where it's all leading to. You know, it's, yeah. it's a series of events. And that's fine, but I just don't know what the what it, are we. It puts you in an uncomfortable position of really having no idea what direction the show is taking. Right, <clears throat> right. Because that's what I feel as well. Mm-hmm. I, I totally. Mm-hmm. But there's, I think there's a. You know what it. You know what it is. It would if. If they got to the last episode or two and just botched things kind of coming together, mm-hmm. or if their cliffhanger doesn't make it worth m- making us want to watch season five, which is already slated, you know, it's already going to happen. Like, it, there's no, oh, it depends on how well this season does. No, season five is happening. So there is something, I'll, I'll say this much, they wouldn't have greenlit season five if they didn't see where the the kind of direction the show was going to go mm-hmm. not where it's currently going but where it's going to go and my feeling is there has to be even in, in a meager way there has to be a tie in to the walking dead i'm kind of convinced at this point and i'll tell you why uh, i was checking the ratings again this week when it came to both combined tv and dvr uh, stats mm-hmm. and also on amc on demand by the way and mm-hmm. there is a ratings uptick the tra- it is trending upward it has done better than than um season three at this time of year you know mm-hmm. as of the end of august so th- that's one but two it seems to me that the only reason why amc would renew season uh renew fear the walking dead for season five is if Somebody gave them what's going to be happening in the next several, basically, basically the first, what would be happening in the first episodes of season five and what the ending episodes of season four are. And Mm -hmm. it seems to me that it it would make sense for them to have some sort of interesting tie-in, reveal, conjunction, or some sort of joining thing that joins them to the rest of the the Walking Dead universe. Because Mm -hmm. it's the whole Gimple and I know I mentioned this before, the whole Gimple, um, Nicotero, Hooth, um, what was the last one? Uh, um, the female producer, I forget her name. Oh, um, Angela King? Well, no, not Angela King. She's a little like the showrunner, but um, oh, yeah. the EP, uh-huh. the one who writes a lot of social media, social justice warrior stuff. I forget her name now. Anyway, <laughs> Gail Ann Hurd. Gail Ann Hurd. <laughs> it was on the tip of my tongue. I know. I was um, like, when you said, like... <laughs> yeah, that, that's how you know, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, because I, I follow a lot of those points. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she's out there, man. It's like, it's like... Love it. I feel like her job is not really <laughs> running The Walking Dead <laughs> at this point. It's political activist. <laughs> Exactly. Which and, is awesome. And, and again, I'm not. I'm trying to avoid a, a judgment call of any kind. But but it's kind of it's kind of like when you see um, all the Walking Dead characters that are on vacation, you get start to get really really nervous. Did they fire her? You know, like did, did, know. did she get written off the show? I know. So, so I when you, when I see her um, doing some of the political activism stuff, I'm kind of like, oh, oh uh, does is she still do? Oh, she is still doing. Oh, she's kind of phoning it in. Okay, no, I'm kidding. Yeah, uh oh. But the, the whole thing, the whole reason why I'm mentioning this is because like, like these four main people, they it, somebody must have dropped, these four people must have dropped the script for the Walking Dead universe on AMC's lap and said, get a load of this. This is what we're doing. You're going to, your your balls, your gonads are going to fall off. Your tits are going to fly. It's, it's, this is going to be amazing. And AMC said, hell yes. And, and. Kari Payton's reaction, again, I'm mentioning it the third time in a row, Kari Payton's reaction really, really sold me on the fact that I'm not nervous at all about Rick leaving the show. They must be doing something pretty amazing, pretty um, interesting with his departure slash what he might be doing next. Nobody, I mean, my theory even going further than that is I think 
and I, I did mention this briefly on the ramp up, but like I think they're gonna they're gonna just take him away. He's gonna be sequestered somewhere. And even further now, mentioning this for the first time, is that I think maybe they might do a spinoff show. You mm. know? Even if it's even if it's just a mini series, maybe if it, you know what I mean, like just kind of like a like a what happened to Rick story. And it could mean that he dies in that story, but we will be getting more Rick. That's my mm. idea. Mm-hmm. And, and it's going to have significant um, ramifications for the universe to the point where it could pro- propel like at least a few more seasons of mm. either show. Hmm. Interesting. It would have to be something pretty amazing. Like for somebody to leave the the point of their departure, like even, okay, even like Nick leaving and, and Madison leaving, you know, in terms of their deaths. Like mm-hmm. I know that Madison was planned, obviously, but right. Nick's wasn't, mm-hmm. but they managed to do some interesting things with people's emotions mm-hmm. and, and character direction as a result of that, that loss, that, that person leaving, you know, uh, what was mm-hmm. it? Frank, uh, Frank Delane. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of, I kind of like that. I kind of like that they took it and made something more out of it. Right. Like, can you imagine if Nick was around, it almost wouldn't make sense. There has to be like a tremendous amount of loss. There has, they have to really break them down to be able to bring them back up and bring them to get, together even better. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it, Rick's departure has to be somewhere along those lines. Mm. Yeah, it has to be relevant. Yeah, they have to make it significantly relevant. Propel the story. Right. Yeah. Beyond Otherwise, our expectations. Yeah. Because our expectations are pretty damn low. <laughs> it's it's a tall order. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough ask to to get, to ask us to to have faith that the mm-hmm. main first guy we see wake up in the beginning will get shot. Really. Mm-hmm. But um, it's a tough ask, and it's in too many people are kind of questioning it, and uh, I I look honestly, if you stuck through eight seasons, Fear the Walking Dead until now and haven't discovered that when somebody has to leave the show it really it, it really does take the show in a direction that you didn't expect mm-hmm. i have it i have that level of faith i mean this is a tough ask but it's kind of like well we better get something pretty interesting as a result and we will yeah. i believe that we will well i certainly hope so <laughs> <laughs> oh ye of little faith <laughs> uh, yeah i, I was the atheist <laughs> can i tell you I, I kind of like having this job. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to believe. You're on the positive end. That's fabulous. Yeah, man. We got to get in there. We got to get energized. That, that's all I'm going to say. I'm going to get enthused about what's going to happen because I, I, you have to have faith. I mean, we, we've lost so many people along the way. It's just not worth it. It's mm-hmm. just not worth it to hang in there and see what, what interesting thing they do. Even if, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't live up to my hopes and expectations, it might later on even. So yeah. who knows? That is true. Oh man. Okay. So getting back to the episodes, where yeah. should we begin? I don't know. Well, I'll t- I'll start you off. Okay. Because because we do start off with at, in um, episode twelve week, we do start off with Naomi trying to radio John, mm-hmm. and uh, can't reach him. Right. And she's losing hope. Mm-hmm. And we do kind of get to this thing where. I mean, like, my first reaction was kind of like, oh, absence makes the heart grow fonder. Like, uh, an episode ago or two episodes ago, we were kind of experiencing Naomi, or Naomi, holy crap, (laughs) June, um, asking questions to Althea, like, okay, who am I right now? Is the the person I, uh, is the person I, is is what John Dory loves really me? Is June really the person that, you know, am I really the June that he fell in love with? And now we're getting to the point where, like, screw that. How did you believe that I was still alive? We're going back to John's faith and John's hope. And how does anybody... Honestly, first of all, how does anybody have John Dory's faith, you know, and belief system? It's a stretch, for sure. Because we all think we'd be him, right? No. You know how I feel about that. (laughs) Like, I'm I'm the first one to be like, look, I think we all would think in our minds that we'd be a Daryl, but we'd really be a Eugene. Like, let's be real. But we all want to be him. We all want to be Daryl. We that's, all want to be thing. like a John Dory. We would like to. I mean, John Dory is, is he's, he's very kind hearted and, and we want to hope that we would still, I mean, I think that's possible in the sense of retaining your, um, your faith in humanity. I think that that aspect we can, we can still be. I think that that's possible, you know. Are I, you I sure? Think, 
I think so. I think that is. You'd like to、possible. think so. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that we wouldn't be naive necessarily.、Yeah. I don't think John Dory's naive either, though. No, I don't think he's naive. I don't think he's naive either. But I think that that's the that's the the happy medium to be, which is you're not naive, but you still have faith in your fellow man, you know, for the most part, without being a moron that's going to walk into <laughs> clear and present danger. No. You know? Right, right. Which,、so. and again, John Dory isn't. You know, he, yeah, he does play it safe when necessary, but、yep. yeah, but he operates off of a, a different kind. Well, what motivates him is basically living, like he says in the next episode, is is living the next day, living for the next day. You know, doing doing what's right, doing more, getting to your people. You know, staying connected with the people you love.、Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I don't know. I mean. I, again, I'd like to think that I am that now. I like to think that I would be that come the apocalypse. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't really like to rush to that kind of judgment because who knows what we would be if if something like that happened. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, but we we get to the point where she is.、Uh, yeah, I mean it's yeah. So we even start off with her kind of almost empty. She she's kind of. Saying the truth out loud again to a walkie where nobody's listening,、mm-hmm. and she says, "You know, how did you do it? You know, how did you believe that you'd find me? How did you? How were you so sure?" And she's watching the videos. You know, she's trying to figure out the secret sauce. You know, I I thought at first it was an, it was like an absence makes the heart grow fonder thing,、mm-hmm. but really it's kind of like she's trying to decode. How he gets his faith? Where does he get it from? She wants to kind of borrow it, put it on, try it out, and I think she kind of does. It's really tough, you know. It, June essentially to us, especially, is a new person.、Mm-hmm. You know, we had the Naomi version. You know, the person that runs away, the person that kind of wants to lose faith.、Uh, same with Laura. Laura just kind of wants to get back to what we don't know. <laughs> Mm-hmm, but,、mm-hmm. but you know, but Laura, yeah, the one who just lost her child, basically, right? You know, and、um, and Naomi was the skittish person who was trying to learn Madison's ways, and I think June, what June is trying to do right now, I think, is there's nothing left. I don't even know who I am. I don't. After all of this, after what I've been through, after hanging out with the vultures, after almost dying、uh, by the hands of <laughs> Alicia. Uh, who am I? And I think she's trying on. I think she's been wearing Madison's coat for a while,、mm-hmm. basically trying to try out this sort of saving people thing.、Mm-hmm. Hasn't really been tested yet.、Mm-hmm. And and basically, like she says on, like Jenna Elfman says on Talking Dead, I think she's trying on John Dory's boots. But she doesn't really know what she's doing. She doesn't know how to navigate that. She doesn't know how to have faith. I think. She, I think honestly, John Dory's just kind of shooting from the hip and and going、mm-hmm. on gospel.、Mm-hmm. So, so we do see we do see from the beginning that you see the scratch part of that of, of her trying to try on John Dory's faith and Madison's jacket, right? And, and then seeing how that goes, and, yeah,、uh, yeah, and it's rough. I mean, they run out of water. They, I mean, they run they've run out of fuel. They don't have any battery. They, they're losing battery on the walkie-talkie. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, and they're kind of dry. Yeah, yeah,、uh, that is true. And what we could do is we could follow just that. Or we can flip back to Sarah and Wendell, because it's kind of like, yeah, I don't know. See, that's the tough part of like these episodes is that they're kind of, they kind of build slowly.、Mm-hmm. Put it this way, because I know we have two episodes to cover. The bottom line about this episode is that we see that she tries on these clothes, and then they, it more or less works. But when we get to the part where she's trying to get the MRAP back,、um, well, trying to get the medicine for Althea, and she had lied,、mm-hmm. uh, we、right. find you know she bumps into this guy named Quinn,、mm-hmm. and Quinn. What we find out is Quinn is basically Naomi in male form,、mm-hmm. kind of like a mirror image of of Laura or Naomi. And in spite of trying on Madison's jacket, she really does give it the college try. You know, she tries to be what she was to her, but she kind of falls short.、Mm-hmm. But by the end of the episode, she is able to radio him in time and tries to get him on board. But filthy woman kind of intervenes and takes him down because、mm-hmm. mm-hmm. she's been listening the whole time.、Mm-hmm. And so. I guess the, I guess what kind of turned it on turned it to you. It's kind of like I mean, what what did you make of of that kind of interaction? Like how how did how did you feel about what they were trying to do in that in those scenes? 
Which scene specifically? Well, okay, especially in the MRAP when when uh, when she put, basically pulls a gun on Quinn, and and at the end of the day, she's like, "You didn't believe me. You, know, mm-hmm. you didn't. You couldn't believe that you could be part of a group. You know, you couldn't you, that you couldn't be helped. That you would be that guy that would be last priority, and you'd be kicked out. You know, no mm-hmm. matter what." You know, she tried to do what Madison did, and she just kind of fell short. You know, she told him to go. Bottom mm-hmm, line, mm-hmm. and and so that that whole scene was kind of like, you know, like like how did you feel about this whole mirror image thing? How did how did you feel about like her falling short? I mean, I couldn't blame her, but at the same time, there's you know, like who could be Madison? Like it seems like everybody kind of does fall short of Madison. Like Alicia does when it comes to the ALG Lumber Company guy that was trying to send notes. Uh, I mean, not being able to save Nick, you know, Nick, Nick dying. I don't know. It's like I don't use Madison as a barometer because I didn't really like Madison. So for me, like June's reactions, like, cool, you know, like you, you, you make sense. Yeah, you make sense. It's like, do what you got to do, you know, like, so I, I appreciate June, you know, like, she she kind of played like you know the weak card and then he tried to kind of you know run off or whatever so she had to overpower him take control when yeah i mean she gave him a chance you know yeah. I mean, she she basically did what any one of us would have done yeah exactly absolutely yeah but i th- i think these guys are kind of stuck on madison though I, and i think that's why that's why i'm not going to say that's why she had to go but there is an interesting idea about canonizing the people we love when they pass away, like making them into kind of saints. Mm. And they become these paragons of virtue that we almost it's like it's like our mothers, you know, like we can't we almost can't live up to their image, to what they represented. I mean, think about what Madison did. You know, um, Naomi pulled a gun on Madison. Madison seems to talk her down. Naomi runs away from Madison and then she falls into the vat of oily walkers. Madison jumps in even after having the gun pulled on her. She could have just flipped her the bird and said, Sayonara, sucker. You know, just you, that's, that's what you get. You know, that, that's just what happens. It's over. Um, but no, she dives in, kills those walkers. No one's gone till they're gone. I mean, I guess the question really is, is that, do you think that, I mean, do you think that no one's gone till they're gone? I mean, is it, is there a limit? I mean, are you like on the Alicia camp or like, Sometimes people are gone. I mean, I think you have to do what you have to do to survive. I think you have to, I I don't know. I mean, I just don't, I guess I never really looked at Madison as like this savior and this grand character. So it's like, I'm not impressed. So like, I'm, I'm, when I look at June, I'm impressed with, I'm impressed with June. I'm impressed with um, Althea. I'm impressed with John's able to keep his humanity, like I, like I was saying, but when it came to like Madison, Alicia, you think she was too unrealistic. I just I don't understand the character. Like I feel like her character was a certain way, and then this season, for the period that she was around, she was like savior Madison. You know, I'm like, well, what about like you know vicious Madison? Right. I'm like, I, and I just I, I just kind of feel like the tables were turned to make her into this like saint that was like a martyr and I'm like well this is kind of new and I knew and I, in speaking to other people a lot of people I knew were kind of confused with the all of a sudden direction on Madison because they thought that they were going to go a certain direction with Madison and then they didn't and I kind of understand that you know and because I just don't I guess the thing is it's like Madison's character just doesn't strike me as this this I don't know this model to, to, to follow necessarily like and I mean maybe I don't know. I, I just, again, it's an area that has a lot of holes, you well, know, I, and part of we, it is probably because they did this time jump from, yeah. you know, season three that you don't know necessarily what happened between point A and point B that you're just sort of like, well, how do we get here? <laughs> well, even then, uh, so, so you're bringing up a very good point. Like, even if they did the time jump and you kind of wanted to be caught up and you, you got some stories here and there and actually one of them is relevant to Blackjack. But um, had they not like so I didn't mind the time jump as much between past and present because they, they did it did kind of reveal things in a way that we wouldn't have gotten had they gone chronologically, obviously. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it was a good prop to kind of keep you guessing as to what could have possibly happened to make people so broken. Right. Mm hmm. And but but there is something to be said and, and you do bring it up. And I, I do kind of agree that the only thing that makes Madison a lot very confused now they tried to cover this in the Amina episode the basically the last episode or you know where Madison does the self-sacrifice thing and then Althea reveals the tape to Alicia right 
mm-hmm. like why she suddenly changes her tune, you know, and then her uh, Madison's whole interaction with Althea at the time, right before she was going to make the tape, during and then afterwards, and and how she kind of changes her mindset. Mm-hmm. But like the fact that it happens in one episode, you know, episode eight. And we're going back and forth between timelines, and and, and you know, obviously Madison's only in one. Uh, th- it is a little confusing. There is it, it happens too quickly that whole process, like her mm-hmm. finding the stadium, finding her kids, finding the mm-hmm. stadium. You know, post Althea, I mean, you figure that there would be something. I don't know. May- maybe it's the idea of her being reunited with her kids and Nick, and then Strand and. I, you know, I could, I could kind of leave it on. Fi- See, that's the thing. I could, I'm okay with kind of suspending my disbelief and and kind of going on faith and having the ep- that episode kind of explain it the way it is. But mm-hmm. I do understand it. I do how mentally, um, if you're just not there, you're not there, and I couldn't blame you at all. And mm-hmm. it, that's the only sacrifice of the time jumps that I can see is that when you leave that piece hanging for so long and then you get to the point where you're almost kind of incredulous. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you don't see the, the connection between no one's gone till they're gone. Now, a year had passed since they set up the stadium, so maybe she kind of, with each save that she had, with each win, with each bringing people back from wherever they were around the area, mm-hmm. that maybe she got more benevolent, more benevolent. And you kind of see that with... Um, let me try to think this for a second. You kind of see that when... I mean, it's, it's almost like a drug. I, uh, when Alicia doesn't save that guy from AGL, the, the lumber company, she goes into a, a spiral. It's like, you know, I can't, I, like, I can't do this without her. Mm-hmm. Um, Luciana's kind of the same way in Blackjack. Where like, I just, you know what? Here's, here's, I, I know I can't save this guy, but I, I have to do something. I need to do something because I, I don't have anything left. And mm-hmm. I'm still trying to live up to this ideal because it, it looks like, the Madison ideal is kind of like this weird heroin <laughs> that they're just addicted to. It's just, you know, they're used to living a certain way, like saving people, and they just need to get back to that. They need to know that they don't need Madison to do that, and, and they just can't seem to hack it without mm-hmm. her. So, I mean, it's maybe it's true. Maybe Madison had the secret sauce. You know, it helped people along you know maybe the fact that she was around made them stronger you know it's a theme that's kind of coming up right now is that are people stronger together and that's going to come up on the walking dead as well are we stronger when we're larger in numbers it's it's what daryl brings up are we stronger with larger numbers or were we just good as a group kind of going from place to place so you know? excited. yeah so, so it does there is some overlap mm-hmm. you know morgan's in it you know uh, luciana's in it they're all kind of in it mm-hmm Oh, now the stream's kind of cutting out a bit. Oh, 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 hold on a second. Are you there? Yep, I'm here. Oh, no. I think we lost the stream. Uh, we lost... Damn it. We lost the YouTube stream. We're still on on Facebook, I think. Oh, yeah, wait. Yeah, we're live again. Oh. <laughs> this sucks. The stream is continuing. Here we go. <sighs> Video output low. Well, go screw yourself. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. So it, it does. It, it does seem that some of these some of these themes are going to overlap. Mm-hmm. You know, between the Walking Dead and Fear of the Walking Dead, are we stronger together as a big group, or, strong, or you know, as communities trying to um, belong to one another, or are we just you know, should we be alone, right? Yeah, basically. So, yeah, but that that's a really good point. Uh, honestly, I'm glad that you brought that up. I'm glad. First of all, I'm glad that you brought up the the uh, the shaky ground that we're expected to kind of stand on while we're watching the, this show but i also i'm glad you finally kind of articulated why the madison character is so um unrealistic mm-hmm. in the way she kind of she's kind of portrayed like in her benevolence let's say or her her like you almost don't get her it, it, right. the transition is too quick the transition is too quick that's exactly it like again I, again i can operate on that faith i can suspend a little disbelief i can believe sure. that they've been through something mm-hmm. but i get it i totally get it will not fault you for it points to carol <laughs> i'm i'm just I'm just saying that's all <laughs> yeah that is all that's all yeah so let me just see come something. at me fans come come at me fans. <laughs> no but you you make complete sense like as much as we kind of love her in a way in a way i mean we, we do love the character it's just what she the way they kind of suss out her story mm-hmm. is a bit you know 
it's a little confusing. And it's not, you know, it's just the, na- the nature of how they decided to reveal it. Right. That That's what makes it really com- uh, confusing. Yeah. Um, people We Know. Yeah, people We Know comes about a couple times in this episode. I have to just remember where. I wrote a lot of notes because they thought we would have we cover episode by episode. <laughs> and now we kind of have to skip a couple things, you know? Like, um, okay. Uh, oh, yeah. So one thing I wanted to talk about really quickly was that um, Morgan makes a callback. So uh, in our last episode, I mentioned something about how um, at the end of that episode, and I think um, he mentions, you know, to Purvis, the guy, not the guy who owns the truck, I, or maybe it was the guy who owns the truck. I can't remember who. Mm-hmm. Um, but apparently, like, it, it's it's kind of revealed that the truck belonged to Polar Bear, I think, or at mm-hmm. least the notebooks did, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and that, that maybe Wendell and Sarah had stolen the notebook from Polar Bear, or mm-hmm. the or the truck. And because here's the thing, in Blackjack, when we finally see Purvis, uh, Walker Purvis, mm-hmm. Sarah and Wendell don't recognize him. No. And so, it, so whoever Morgan is radioing at the end of the episode prior to this, episode 11... Mm-hmm. Uh, I had made a mention that it feels like this is what Morgan should have done uh, in response to Rick radioing him in season one. Like every every episode after their encounter, Rick keeps on trying to check in, trying mm-hmm. to see if Morgan's still around. And Morgan doesn't mm-hmm. answer, and he kind of acknowledges this in episode twelve. And I was kind of I was like I had this like weird boost like oh dude I called it. Yeah. It's like he actually makes mention. He says, Morgan, it's like Morgan acknowledges how Rick kept in touch via radio and Morgan didn't or couldn't. And, and then that Rick had to stop trying after a certain point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and the whole reason is like, you know, you keep trying to reach this guy. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know what? I kind of I kind of owe it to, mm-hmm. you know, the whole point is to try, you know, to mm-hmm. give people the chance, you know, and yeah. the more you keep trying. You know, the, the whole point is to kind of at least make an effort. And, and Rick did. And when Morgan found out about that, it kind of changed things. Right, right. You know, so mm-hmm. I pat myself on the back. I'm like, holy, I, I literally like screamed out, holy shit. We went back to it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, what about, what about week kind of stood out to you? What about what? Uh, about we, uh, episode 12 week. Because there are some things like the Wizard of Oz thing that they actually kind of brought up. Col- Coleman mm-hmm. Bur- Domingo brings up in Talking Dead. Mm-hmm. And this is this is directorial kind of debut on Fear. And, uh, That's right. That's he right. does make mention of the Wizard of Oz thing with Morgan. Like everybody's trying to find their version of home. Mm-hmm. Like Wendell and mm-hmm. Sarah and Jim. So it's like the Cowardly Lion, <laughs> the, mm-hmm. the Tin Man and the, you mm-hmm. know, and you're just trying to figure out who's who. Mm-hmm. And that the filthy woman is kind of like the wizard, w- the wicked witch of the West. Do you know mm. what I mean? Poisoning water, water bottles in 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 the beautiful yeah. patch of flowers. Oh, I think we're losing the, the YouTube stream again. Oh. Maybe the connection is choppy. Yeah, I don't I don't know what it is. Don't you hate YouTubers that complain about the stream? Like I'm losing it on I'm losing YouTube, but like Facebook is brilliant right now. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there you go. Facebook is 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 very reliable. Facebook is superior. See, go figure. Uh, you know, and I want to change the YouTube uh, ingest server, but I can't because we're still streaming. Mm. <sighs> this is going to suck. Okay, let's, let's give it a couple seconds. I'm sorry. Yeah? Facebook, you're going to have to put up with this for some reason. Oh, oh guess what? Um, my mother's now listening on Facebook. <laughs> right when the stream dies, my mom is joining. Oh, uh, <laughs> Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, so, uh, okay, so, what, okay, I need to get to the bottom, okay, no, we can't talk about anything, <laughs> just, <laughs> just yet. Um, let, let's get, let's give, fa- let's give, um, YouTube a second. Let's give YouTube a second to catch up. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I should just stop it and restart it. Maybe I should do that. Uh, I, I wonder what's going to happen if I do that. It's an experiment. Should we try? We can try and see if Facebook is still going, right? Yeah, it's still going. Um, okay, let's try this now. Okay, I'm going to do it. Uh, okay. Primary, backup. Okay, start. Come on, YouTube. Oh, God, come on. We are experiencing... Hello, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> she said hello. Aw, that's awesome. Yeah, shout out to my mom, Stella. Aww. Okay, hold on. We we are experiencing technical difficulties on YouTube, but mom, you can listen to us ranting all you want. 
Let's go that's here. That's so awesome. Start streaming. I can't wait for somebody like that's close to me listens. You know, yeah, you should tell your mom to listen. Is, is this the monster show? Yeah, this is the monster show. I know. Right? Well, she sees me set up, so she knows that it's happening. But I mean, you know, this is a little late for her. So mm, I see. Oh, I just sniffed into the mic. I did something I, I told myself I'd never do. No. Wait, you know what? I think YouTube is the one that's experiencing technical difficulties. YouTube itself. Oh, man. It's not even starting. Okay, I'm going to try... Oh, I have to double-check my stream key now. Ugh. Lol. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try this one more time. Come on, YouTube. I can't believe this. And we just got, like, two listeners, too. We just had two Jeez. listeners. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, I might as well say hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. You, sh you should. It's your son, <laughs> David. Oh, man. Oh, it, mm, is it working? Mm, it's, it's not transferring any data. Oh, you son of a gun. Actually, you know what? I should have, I should have replied to her directly. I apologize, Carol. My tech... Okay, it's starting. It's starting. Wait, I think it's starting. I did it again. I just sniffed at the mic. Uh, okay, let's try that. Okay, yeah, so we're back on... I just got a notification, but it's saying starting. So it must be different... <sighs> Man, well, I'm going to have to probably edit these two together. <laughs> There's two, basically two um, separate live streams, I think. It's just going to gonna add another, uh, I'm assuming, another um, video on Facebook, on mm -hmm. YouTube. This is not what's supposed to happen, people. I feel like I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have to stop and start OBS, but if I do that, we lose some of the special effects. Uh, who cares? Uh, give me one sec. Let's do this. It's not even stopping the stream. That's what's so scary. <sighs> okay, let's just... Okay, I'm going to restart OBS. I apologize to our... Well, I apologize to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I regret nothing. <laughs> okay, let's try this one more time. Okay, let's start. It's gonna try to pick it up again. Mom, what do you think about the show so far? <laughs> <laughs> you, you could keep commenting. Your son, you, your mom. L listen, you have to understand something. And now the YouTube stream is gonna start picking up now. But mom, you have to understand something. This never happens. <laughs> I, I, this is actually the rare occasion. This is this is me blaming my mom for the stream cutting out. Oh. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing the worst part part about this is you know i'm kidding i do um, the world knows that i'm kidding my mom is gonna take this seriously <laughs> she's gonna be like again you're blaming me <laughs> and, and meanwhile that's the stream that's working the facebook one where she's the the one that's listening so, <laughs> so. <laughs> terrible son terrible terrible okay we're back we're back on youtube folks as if you needed to know. <laughs> okay, so last we left off was was the whole Wizard of Oz thing. Um, yeah, so here's the thing. The thing that I really like the most about Week, and maybe the one thing that we... I will go over some of the highbrow talking points at, at some point, but this is one kind of one of them. Althea mentions that the reason why she lies to June, didn't tell her the truth, is because she wouldn't... You know, obviously she wouldn't value the tapes and the experiences in the van as much as... It, she felt like as much as anybody would mm -hmm. and for a person who values the truth said out loud you know to kind of heal them and all that stuff and preaching that and, and all that behind the camera the thing that she does yeah, her, her doing this first of all is a gigantic betrayal and I feel like it took Madison-esque benevolence on June's part to kind of try to look past that bullshit right right and the thing about understanding that though is okay look at these two people mm -hmm. Naomi was part of that FEMA shelter group right she got to mm -hmm. know some people she learned some skills from somebody the what was the book that she had the I forget what the book was called uh yeah it was just in case right yeah because yes. I was I was afraid to kind of mix it up with just survive somehow mm -hmm. but you know all these things she learned the people she got to know her daughter all this stuff Althea must I think deep down June kind of feels the same way as Althea when Althea finally explains the whole thing you know as mm -hmm. much as she was afraid to kind of 
oh, it's all, it's, it's just the tapes, the tapes, you know, what are they, what's that? Your life means more than the tapes, you know, you're sick, what are you, are you crazy? Mm-hmm. But I think Naomi, Naomi, <laughs> I think June gets it. Yes. And, and um, because of the, because of the FEMA thing, because getting to know these people, leaving somebody behind. And when Althea explains it, she kind of makes it clear that she was the sole survivor also of a group that she was a part of, of people she got to know, people uh, people you know, what was on, um, what was on, uh, on, what's his face? Oh, on Quinn's face, we find out in the next episode, people you know. Right. Right? The theme? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and by the way, that ties us to the mid-season trailer also. Like, I saw that people you know on that face, and it was like, right. what, what is that all about? And um, but they also showed in that um, trailer Morgan was suffering on his face. Yeah, but do do you think that was like photoshopped in or because I no, thought I think it, that's legit. So that's going to come up. Mm-hmm. Probably if not the next episode, the one after. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be interesting because if he he's still alive when that stuff is written on his forehead, so if she somehow gets a hold of him or he does it to himself. I'm right. kind of afraid. That's what I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure. Does that make you a little worried? This is a safe space. <laughs> I just feel that I don't feel worried because from a from a logical perspective, I just don't feel that they would do this whole transition with Morgan into fear only to have him killed off by a random crazy or like, like fall back into old habits. Yeah, it just seems it, it it doesn't seem to make sense from a big picture perspective. Right, could be wrong, but I just don't think it makes all that much sense. So it might be him just sort of like having a moment where he's kind of like maybe going down the rabbit hole a little bit, but then he pulls himself out. Yeah, yeah, and that I feel like that's I feel like that's happened to everybody right now. Mm-hmm. They're falling into bad bad habit or you know prior habits and stuff right. like that, and then somehow they'll pull out, they'll pull themselves out. Like, and we'll get to the part where Morgan's mm-hmm. part because that's really at the end of Blackjack, but you do sense that he kind of goes out strong right before stuff starts to happen. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, like really strong and I'll, ex- I'll explain why I-, I feel like that is there's a huge significance to what he does at the end of that but going back to Althea though I, the, the, the image that I had in my brain of what it must have meant to be Althea is take um, Carol from The Walking Dead now mm-hmm. just imagine that in, in your mind just imagine that all the colonies are wiped out Hilltop Saviors you know uh, the Sanctuary uh, Alexandria Safestone the Kingdom imagine all of them are gone and Carol's mm-hmm. the only one left you know, because in my mind, I think the person that would survive out of all of them and it would be Carol. In my, it just hands down. You know, yeah. in my opinion, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Imagine how she would feel, like what she would carry, you know, how she would move on. You know, what would she be like? You know, what what would be her totems? What, would she like hold on to the memory of the people that she cared about? Rick, all those mm-hmm. people. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And imagine she would created some sort of totems, some sort of keepsakes and stuff like that, and she she moved on, and then. She kind of meets another group and then gets into the kind of same kind of pickle mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. she kind of, you know, she kind of, she's kind of on the outside. And you'd, you've seen and felt moments where Carol was just kind of on the outside, didn't really yeah. want to feel like. I mean, we saw that. We saw mm-hmm. that in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Where she stayed outside the group. She didn't kind of want to be belong, you know. And so imagine if she lost those totems. Yeah. I mean, how she would feel, how hard she would fight to kind of keep those people alive in her heart via those totems. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. her risking her and maybe somebody else's life on the line just to get them back. Right. So, so that's what I was thinking of when I was thinking about Thea. What it must have been like to, and I kind of wanted to know. I, I want to, and, and here's the thing. My feeling is the filthy woman is somehow connected, maybe in some way connected to her past. To whose past? To uh, Althea's past. Somehow Mm. in some, either some sort of indirect way is part of that. Mm. You know, I I know I, know, I, I, I do feel for sure that she definitely has something to do with what happens to Polar Bear and the benevolent trucker society. Yeah, no, definitely. For sure. Because he does mention... You know, I, I want to see the one woman I don't want to see. He says something to that effect. Yeah. Like, yeah. is there anybody you want me to get? Like, the one woman I don't want to see. Like, the right. one woman who is alive. Right? right. For all we know, she could have been his crazy wife. Who knows? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean... Let's take a I, moment, by the way, mm-hmm. to kind of acknowledge the fact that Tanya Pinkins is goddamn amazing. She plays scary on another level. The the filthy woman. The actress who plays the filthy woman. Yeah, I know. I'm just wondering if I find it, like, in terms of villains who I've, who I've found oh, menacing. You've made that very clear at the top of this episode. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> that I'm just you like concrete villains. Yeah, I'm just trying to think, like, is she menacing to me? Like, what's my initial reaction to her i will say unsettled like you don't know what she's going to do next and that makes me feel very uneasy i yeah i mean for me i feel like you know i i look at her as one of those kind of people that you would look at and, and feel like you know they there there's no hope there they're just kind of lost or not lost because loss would imply that they're lost and can be found they're just mentally gone yeah so and I think that's what the show is trying to get us to feel, by the way, by the end mm-hmm. of Blackjack, mm-hmm. is that, oh, no, no, there's no hope here. No. There's, there's no, there's no coming back from this. No, she's just, she just has too many problems. This is just another person who's lost their damn mind come the apocalypse. Yeah. And they need to be, you know, I, I, they need to be. I'll admit they something. Mm-hmm. They need to be dealt with. But yeah, I'll, I'll admit something. Mm-hmm. I feel like even after this, I mm-hmm. feel like Morgan's going to try. And the reason why I feel this way is that... Um, I think that's gonna of, be that's gonna be pretty damn annoying, and I'll tell you why. I think oh, I think Morgan is just gonna he's fe- gonna feel like he needs to try because if he can't save her, what justifies him saving himself? Oh, that's, God. It, see what I'm saying? That, see how compelling that idea is? I, I know it's annoying. It's, it's super annoying. annoying. It's super annoying. But you get it because you know what I mean? no, I don't get it because we've <laughs> gone through this trope before. Like I'm not gonna kill. I'm not gonna kill. I don't want to kill. I want to be a pacifist. That doesn't work in this new world. It does not. But didn't it though? Didn't it work with the wolf? Like he no. set him free, and he kind of, you know. <sighs> That's a stretch. I mean, it is like, a stretch, right? <laughs> I mean, you really had to. I mean, yeah. After you had to kill a whole bunch of other wolves. Yeah, like, he, I mean, he wasn't Maximum Morgan yet. Like he wasn't the real Morgan yet. But he still, I mean, he kind of. And we he and we've seen worked. this with Carol too. You know, like when she's like, I don't want to kill anymore. I'm like, stop with that. Oh no, but she, her her stuff was way more real. If you remember remember carol it was kind of like it wasn't re- it drove me crazy with oh carol. no it drove me nuts but the fact that she couldn't be a part of the world anymore yeah, uh, i was, mean that was even, insane. Yeah, even the first yeah. time remember when she killed those two people like um was it uh, was it tyrese's sister no, i forget who it was oh was it the, the a girlfriend in the prison yeah exactly the two people she burned yeah and she, yeah, and she felt like she had to go away yeah well well no she volunteered herself away because she knew rick was gonna like yeah 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 you know, and rick banished her he did rick banished her because of what she did so she voluntarily like went away even though nobody wanted that and she well, well we didn't want that <laughs> well say again oh we didn't want that <laughs> no nobody sure. wanted that and when she showed up after she saved them all by blowing up terminus i mean daryl like practically carried her you know like everyone was so happy to to see her i mean yeah yeah i mean well i think at that point look. nobody really knew what, what what like the extent of what it would take to kind of survive in this world i mean rick and yeah. the claimers that was a whole new level of brutality oh yeah that was a whole new level of, of brutality and but but that's the thing at this point in the game morgan knows the levels of brutality that is necessary to survive he's done it himself like he said he's been there before so let's stop with the like i need to save i need to try and save people no some people are beyond that and you have to recognize like being a well-rounded individual in the apocalypse means that you understand and can discern which people can and are open to being saved and which ones cannot. And if they cannot, stop wasting your breath, your energy, your weapons. That's it. You know, let them go or, or deal with them before they deal with you. But like, that's that's it. You know, like, it's very, it's very simple. So if he really does try and save her, I'm that's there should be a segment on like, OK, here's where Carol wants to flip over a table. Like, no, <laughs> it's just. No, I don't blame you, but I'm kind of glad you're saying this because I can keep going back and saying we're all assuming that Morgan is kind of healthy, and I'm I think I'm of the mind of saying I think he's I I think he's just finding his legs, honestly, and I think he's testing his the limits of what he can handle, what he can't, Mm -hmm. and I think he's kind of just incrementally just trying to try these things out, and. I think he really, really, really wants to try to, you know, maybe do the Madison thing. Maybe, and it seems more and more these that he's convincing himself that, and maybe this. And here's what I was going to say about him at the end of the episode of. At the but end I don't of even think he wants to do the Madison thing. I think that he reveres Rick. Like no, I, oh, that too, for sure, that too. Yeah. But I think he more, in some fashion, 
the filthy woman is actually kind of pushing him to be more benevolent because a he was con you know the boxes saved his his life hands down okay that was and he kind of sh it kind of showed him that being a part of people doesn't make you weak you know it doesn't make you know it's not it's not a liability because and what was his thing being around people you're gonna lose people you're gonna lose yourself too and I think he's kind of borrowing this John Dory esque outfit and he's trying to convince himself hey. I just have to believe, you know, I'm going to lose people, you know, but I don't have to lose myself and people are not a liability and people won't, you know, being, being a part of people, it, it's not a curse. You know, I'm not going to just lose people and be the sole survivor, you know, and I think the only way to survive is to, to be a part of people because had I not been, you know, I probably would have gone away. Like I'm not invincible, you know, and I think, I think the filthy woman's actions kind of push him. Like he, you know, when somebody does something and have you ever, you've, have you ever been in a position where somebody tells you you're not something and then you try to prove that the, that you are, Yeah, that absolutely. you're right. And I think that's, what's kind of going on here. You know, I'm going to double down on this. You're absolutely wrong. And here's why. Mm -hmm. and, and then, then the, the guns come out and then shoot the whole truck. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's the thing. I kind of like when the show finds a way to live on the edge of these concepts. Because Morgan's right at the edge. Morgan is right on the on the edge of people are an asset. People are, are what's what. You know, this is this is what it's all about. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. And then and then this lady comes in right at the moment where, oh, yeah. Oh, how are you going to feel after this? You know, are you going to want to save me now? Mm -hmm. You know, is, are, are you sure about that? You know, so I, that's as unsettling as what she's doing is. I think it's really great because it pushes Morgan to a point where he has to kind of make a decision. And like, how am I going to react to this? Am I going to take the high road? Am I going to find a way through it or am I going to find a way around it and then just end her? Because mm -hmm. it's like you said, we all know what he's capable of. He's aware of how bad this world is, mm -hmm. but he's trying something out, you know, and he's trying to live a certain way and he's kind of finding his way through it. And I think that's what really, like, I really kind of adore that. I kind of, I know that it's, it's kind of in a chaotic way. You don't know what's going to happen next. This whole season, this whole back half of the season is, I don't know what's happening next. Mm -hmm. It was kind of clear in the beginning. There's a threat, blah blah blah. There's, you know, there's a the time jump kind of has gives that whole storyline a purpose in and of itself because mm -hmm. we need to find out what happens. We need to reveal, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this whole half is all about unsettling. It's all about broken pieces trying to come together. Mm -hmm. You know, and and I think Morgan, we're, everybody here is a part of it. But Morgan, we have more story on Morgan. We have more back, you know, backing story on. Mm -hmm. So, and I think they're key to kind of figuring. All the other people in this story are key to figuring out how Morgan is going to end up reacting to this. I think, to the to the sequence of events that are occurring now. Uh huh. So, that's what I believe. Okay. And okay. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um. Okay, let me see what the other highbrow talking points. <laughs> highbrow talking points. Um, yeah, the trucker network. Okay, so, uh, well, I don't want to talk about that now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay, yeah. It, I mean, there's so many interesting parallels between the filthy woman and, and Morgan. The whole writing on the face. It's like mm -hmm. her version of clear is writing on people's faces the thing she hears on the walkie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you get that kind of feeling. And it, so you do have the sense of he's been there. He kind of knows what this behavior is like. Oh, yeah. He is. You know, It's almost as if he's trying to save himself. In, him, in his mind, he thinks. Yeah. 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 So here's the thing. Do you think Jim is kind of wrong? Uh, or sorry, right about Morgan? Because he does say something at the end of, I think it was Blackjack. It was kind of like, well, we don't know about you. You know, what is, this yeah. that she, what is this that she's talking about, what you're capable of? Mm -hmm. So I guess the question is, do you think in a, in a way Jim is right? Like, well, yeah, we don't given know. what we just said about him maybe trying to at some at, like, to save her. I mean, he says it as he says, he says as much. Well, yeah, I mean, it puts them in a dangerous situation if he's delusional and thinks that he can save people. You know, it's not putting them in a very safe place. It puts them in a not so safe place. So I think it's. It's definitely warranted for them to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Why should we be putting all your all our trust behind this dude? How do we know this guy's so stable? Right. No, justified. Point. Yeah, of course, absolutely. I mean, even knowing what we know, do you think he's justified? What? Um, Let, let's Jim say like we, he knows Morgan's backstory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> like even then, do you think that? Do you think that his life? 
you know, trusting Morgan to do this thing, to go on this mission, to drop the boxes, even though she's going to interfere. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to make you strong, meaning I'm going to turn you into walkers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, knowing th- all of that, like his backstory, what, you know, what she says on the radio, do you think mm-hmm. he, he would still maybe react the same way? Who, Jim? Like, would he yeah. still do the same way? Jim specifically, maybe Wendell and Sarah. I mean, I think you always have to be weary of anybody you meet in this new world. But yeah, I think especially if they knew his backstory. Sure. So like, especially if they know his backstory. Yeah, definitely. I think so. I, I think I'd have to agree. I'd be pretty critical. Yeah. And I think that's, that's, I did want to bring that up because you do see in sneak peeks of next, next week, next episode, uh, you do kind of get the sense that Jim kind of again says, you know, you said we'd be safe. Mm hmm. And by the way, the factory that, and I'm going to say this because I kind of just want to get out of the way, (laughs) but Mm -hmm. the factory that you see them in does give me like little reminders of, I feel like we're kind of, this is really weird. Uh, It's like season one Rick and Daryl. Okay. And, um, you know, season one Rick, Daryl, Daryl Dixon, uh, what's what's Michael Rooker's character again? Um, Merle. Yeah, Merle. Like all those people on the rooftop, I get that kind of sense because, you know, you have people questioning other people. You're saying, you know, don't be a dick. You know, you know, you said it would be safe, you know, they're, and they're trying to run from a threat, you know, which is the walkers because the, the place fills up with um, with walkers in the factory. So you mm-hmm. do kind of sense like they're kind of rebooting Rick in, a, in, a, in, interest, in an interesting way because, you know, like the Wendell and Sarah kind of like. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe I, I could see that. I, I could see that. Yeah. And, and uh, was it officer friendly? <laughs> Officer. That whole thing, mm-hmm. you know, so like like Morgan's kind of like an officer friendly, but with kind of more knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's just the way they shot things, and and you even see Naomi, uh, June, <laughs> and Morgan on the rooftop, and and uh, June kind of goes, "What now?" And he goes, "I don't know." <laughs> right. Yeah, I wish I knew, but I don't. But uh, That's yeah, true. yeah. So there is kind of like that element. Uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. I kind of wanted to talk about why I'm pro Momo. <laughs> Even though you didn't get it. I just... Again. It's, <laughs> you know me. I'm into Walking Dead black like my soul. It's just dire straits. You know, so the comic relief goes over my head a little bit. It's it's okay, but right. it's... But all these new elements, like all these... The, that, that faction that Jim, Wendell, mm-hmm. Sarah, they each mm-hmm. have to kind of bring in their own humor element. But yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But like so, it it just you it doesn't resonate with you quite the same way. Not quite the same. No, not quite the same. I mean, it's okay, but I'm not laughing. So <laughs> I, I, see, I see. I'm dying. I I, mm. I love it. Uh-huh. T- to be perfectly honest, in a show that can totally take itself too seriously, mm-hmm. or the characters kind of take themselves too seriously, or Strand takes himself very seriously. Yeah, it's it, in particular Strand. Like, yeah. I don't like there's a there's a level of and I guess that's the thing it's such again it's such a 180 one from the other like Strand and Alicia are like you know giving the performance a lay Miz level performance in the post apocalyptic <laughs> zombie horror show I was show. thinking Shakespearean if you remember like no, the Shakespearean, guards No Shakespearean there you go yep Shakespearean there you go that works too they're on that kind of like stage or per- or the, their perception is on that kind of stage and then you've got like, you know, a comic relief over here duo, which is like on a totally different, you know, element. So it's, it's a very, it's, 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 it's one extreme to the other, you know, whereas it's not, so it's not, I mean, which is fine. I mean, so do you think it's jarring or it's just kind of like you're not used to it and you don't really know how to react to it. I guess it's, maybe I don't know how to react to it. I'm like, I, I guess it's fine. I mean, I'm trying to think like on Walking Dead, like any kind of points of humor. Like the pudding thing, Taco Tuesdays, uh, Spaghetti Wednesdays, right? Yeah. Spaghetti Tuesdays. To me, like, I, well, I, I guess my humor is always, the humor that I always appreciated in like the Walking Dead universe has always been, I guess like, I don't know, I mean, I guess it says volumes about me, but I guess it's more <laughs> like a crass humor. Like I loved Abraham. Abraham always had me dying. Oh, yeah, But he like- said some pretty offensive <laughs> Crap, yeah, you know, monkey nuts, you know, all, the, all these things, all these things. But I loved it, you know, and the same with, you know, Negan. Negan has said some pretty wild out there stuff, but I appreciate it. And it gives me a chuckle, you know, whereas the whole Momo thing, I'm just sort of like, OK, all right, this is supposed to be comic relief. All right. You know, but it's like I'm not 
<laughs> but like, like I accept that it is supposed to be comic relief, but it, it doesn't make me laugh. Like when Abraham would say his stuff or when it, when Negan says his stuff, it's like that I appreciate and that I can, you know, get behind and, you know, laugh at. But, you know, this, this stuff, not, not so much. I understand the purpose of it. It's just not my pers- particular brand of humor. Yeah, I, I mean, it's more clown funny. Exactly. It's, it's more clown it, funny. Almost. It, it's, it's like, who's a slapstick comedy? comedian i honestly i just watched a french film called uh <laughs> this is gonna be so stupid i literally watched this french film from the 70s called um rabbi rabbi joseph and it's re- literally this the, it, it, it's a bunch of french actors and this one key french actor is it's just it's like the hand movements the the uh the kind of like bird impressions it's like <laughs> mm. you know like that kind of humor mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i mean like like um laurel and hardy or uh okay. or, or like uh, the three stooges that's like the definition of slapstick comedy it's it's you know, okay. knee slapping you know mimicking buster keaton-esque kind of moves vaudevillian almost like just okay. you know like in a small in a small set you do so much with just sound effects and mm-hmm. kind of stunts <laughs> so, so not like not quite that but yeah yeah it's a different brand of comedy whereas like i feel like negan and and um abraham is more your like uh trying to find the, the comedic equivalent uh, uh. well it's kind of like you like like blue comedy i forget which one's the, the one where you you curse is it that's blue comedy right or is that the one where you don't know. curse but i get the idea is this kind of like uh insult comic like um like just uh, think crass i guess like i don't know like, i mean like george dice clay but no, well, I mean, kind of <laughs> Actually, kind of, uh, particularly, kind of. particularly Negan. <laughs> yeah, leather yeah. jacket and all. The, oh my leather god, leather jacket and all. Yeah. So wait, hold on a second. Let's pause here because Negan is the build of Henry Rollins, <laughs> and the <laughs> and the comedy of Andrew Dice Clay. Both kind of wear the, the same comic. thing. In the comic, the comic version, yeah, actually, the comic version is pretty <laughs> much the, the 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 physical attributes and look of Henry Rollins with like a bit of a fifties uh, groin you know, holding kind of edge. <laughs> And then, Edge like, comic. with the with the personality of like uh, Andrew Dice Clay, yeah, yeah, but not on the show, only the personality, kind of, but not not quite. It's kind just, of, but not quite. If he went full Dice, <laughs> I mean, it would kind of alien alienate the audience. But I think this is more of like an easygoing kind of. Um, yeah, no, I mean, Negan is nowhere near as as foul as he is in the comic. Right, like, nowhere near. Well, Rick the defining first. defining characteristics of of their kind of humor, it, the differences, key differences between let's say Negan and Abraham, and then these guys, it doesn't hurt that these guys are kind of new to what's going on. You know, like uh, Jim. Jim is kind of fresh. He's like not been exposed to the world. He's been in his factory the entire time, getting drunk. Let's just say. Um, Good for him. Wendell and Sarah also kind of seem like, you know, they have been kind of getting at walkers, They're, but it's the people that they've kind of avoided. They've kind of gotten by by swiping things, maybe, you know, doing things here and there. But I think, by and large, they're not really dangerous. They're kind of harmless. You know, whereas, you know, you've been a lot around the block many times, you know, you, you have to do things that are, like, morally reprehensible, like, to the, you know, like, really, really questionable, like, the bar kind of lowers when in when you're in the apocalypse mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. and so these guys are kind of just like relatively harmless you know whereas negan it's kind of like okay there's definitely like a past here it's, there's there's definitely progression that led him to this point where he felt like he had to lead lead whereas these three guys i feel like they're kind of wet behind the ears when it comes to dealing with people or mm-hmm. groups in particular mm-hmm. So I think the lack of exposure to, to other people has kind of lent themselves to kind of a wet behind the ears thing. And so mm-hmm. it makes their comedy kind of, okay, it's, for me, it's kind of mm-hmm. easygoing. It kind of makes things a little bit smoother, I'd say. Um, but also it's kind of like new meets old. Like it's season meets non-season. And there's like an element of, in some ways, I think that these serious people need to meet new people to understand what it means to be human, to have mm-hmm. humor, to to know what it's like to be a human again, to have humanity. Like, and part of that humanity is to kind of not be exposed to all these things, and not be hardened by life and, and experiences and survival. You know, to 
to kind of just breeze through the apocalypse or breeze through life or whatever it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And I think I honestly think that these these characters might be part of them being able to come back safely in a way. Their kind of attitude towards life is kind of like refreshing and not dire. I mean, they're not mm-hmm. menacing. Mm-hmm. So I think I think I think you need humor. I think you need humor to kind of get back. No, I I agree. I just can't prescribe to that brand of humor. Like I understand I and get it. Like okay, they're they're infusing their own humor in there. That's fine. It just makes me miss, you know. Also, it makes you miss certain things. I mean, I don't know. I I just think that like it just really cuts the seriousness of of some of these characters like like Strand probably in particular. Do you know what I mean? Like it cuts, you know, some of that. It's like, you know, it cuts the cocaine so it's easier to kind of, you know. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. Mhm. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to move on to Blackjack because, yeah, we're running out of time. Um, yeah, and, and so actually speaking of that, um, you do notice like a kind of schism between Sarah, Wendell, and Jim, and then Althea, June, and Morgan at the top mm-hmm. of this episode. Clearly one of them is kind of like, what is this, an airport shuttle? You know, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, can we get on our way? Can we can we keep moving here? You know, and then, and then all of a sudden you, you start to realize it's like, okay, are these guys going to be a problem? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they are. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plain and simple. I mean, they're already a problem with you. <laughs> wow. You're telling me you didn't laugh when he, when he called Jim Soul Man? Um, after his beer was, speech? Because that, that was, was kind of corny. No, that was that was better. Yeah, no, that, that, that I appreciate it. I appreciate that more than, you know, the Momo and that kind of stuff. Like, <laughs> that, that, that I get. I'm like, okay. Uh, I can appreciate that comment. I get you. I get you. Um, okay, Wendell's wheelchair. Talk. Were you not impressed? Are you not impressed? I. <laughs> the accessorizing not? of characters is something you definitely like in in. Um, are you not entertained? Yeah, exactly. Um, Thank you. You fixed me. There you go. N- not a problem. My gladiator approach. Um, yeah. No, I thought that was cool, but you know, I can appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stuff. Like, okay, awesome, badass. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it makes me wonder what else he's got. Go, go, gadget feet. You know, like, I mean, wow, I didn't he, know he had those. <laughs> I mean, look, I mean, I, this, that's the only, him, his aspect is the only thing that I found compelling or interesting about fear and about Walking Dead, knowing that we will have on Walking Dead a character that is death. How do you function in a post-apocalyptic world Without with legs. a disability? With a dis- with a disability, yeah, yeah. You know, like how exactly do you function? I mean, I've even thought about me and being like, "Oh crap! I don't know how long I'd survive." You know, I have horrible vision. Like, I don't know how that's gonna work. You know, but like, <laughs> I mean, uh, but but even then, it's like you know, we're talking about like you know, much different kind of disabilities. You know, the being wheelchair p- bound. I mean, that's pretty damn serious. And so I appreciated the fact that, like, you know, he's weaponized, like, his, uh, you know, his, his, uh, well, his, his wheelchair. wheelchair, right? Yeah. I was like, that's pretty darn cool. Well, I think what I really, really like about um, Wendell is, and probably this is just Chill Mitchell, is, is this, he says what we think 100%. He says what we, he's like, can you believe this guy? Like when he's talking about Morgan, like, mm-hmm. and you're going to wait and you're going to, you're going to drop these boxes and you're like, this guy over here, you know, like, it's just, he's basically saying what we think on this show sometimes. Like, all right, Morgan, mm-hmm. chill out, you know, mm-hmm. come on, man. Let, yeah. let's, let's, let's move on now. You're being ridiculous. It's like, ah, you stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you stupid Morgan. Yeah, and so like the, the way he kind of says things just makes me feel, um, you know, like it, it makes me feel like, oh, I, ha- I have a voice on this show because mm-hmm. Wendell is saying what the audience kind of thinks at the moment. Mm-hmm. Like that other side of what they really think. Like, okay, they're waiting for the show to kind of move on and move forward. But like part of us is kind of like thinking, this guy, this guy over here, man, come on. You ridiculous. You mm-hmm. ridiculous, man. Mm-hmm. You know, we just want to be safe. You ridiculous. You, 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 you are just getting in our way. I think that's how they're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't that and that to me is kind of refreshing. It's kind of like we get to acknowledge a part. Like, can you? Okay, let me just put it this way: If Morgan explained the Madison story <laughs> to, to Chill Mitchell or like to Wendell, mm-hmm. like that, you can imagine. You can only imagine like Wendell's like, "All right, I'm out. You, you're obviously crazy. You mm-hmm. know, you're following these people to the ends of the earth. This woman, you know, I would have just been done with her a long time ago. I would have head back to Alexandria uh, day one. Mm-hmm. You know, like." And you're following her murderous daughter with that swinging sword? Uh uh-uh, uh, not for me. Come on, Sarah, let's pack it up. Let's mm-hmm. leave these guys on the side of the road. Oh, it's your stick? I got a gun. All right, see you later, Morgan. 
that's how I feel about chill. But, and that's the thing. I look forward to kind of things like that because it kind of really just cuts some of the serious seriousness down a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it kind of it kind of gives like the audience an opportunity to kind of acknowledge some of the not the like the stuff that's kind of suspension of disbelief, but it's more of like uh, like okay, you're reaching now, you're reaching now, um, <laughs> you're reaching now. Walk, uh, fear the Walking Dead. So I don't know. Yeah, that, that's that. That's how that's how I feel about that. That's, I hear that's, you. that's what we're talking about right now. I hear you. Yeah. <sighs> Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, like another note that I kind of found was kind of like when when filthy woman kind of finally reveals herself on the walkie, mm-hmm. you know, saying that you know, you know, you were strong, but the boxes made you weak, and 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 so she goes into this monologue about you know it's still there, you know, what you were, and you realize that, and Althea points this out really quickly. If you're not quick enough, you don't you don't catch it. But she like Morgan's like, how do you know my name? And Althea says really quickly, oh, she saw the tapes. Yeah. You know, like I didn't catch that in the first watch and I didn't really no. understand. Like, I go, okay, maybe she could piece it from some of the radio chatter. And, and No, whatnot. I immediately knew it, it was the tapes. She yeah. went through all the tapes. So she knows everything about all of them. She's, but she's playing, you know, she's playing, she's playing some like psych, psycho silence of the lambs kind of mental case. Like, I know all about you, and Althea, you're this, and Morgan, you're this, and let's get out of here. Fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck out of here with that noise. <laughs> just get out of here with that psycho. <laughs> like, but it, it does kind of tie together finally what we what we saw in the mid-season teaser. You know, that little, mm-hmm. that little um, narration that we had in the middle between the song. Uh, you know, it's so quiet. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. I, I know who you are. It's still there. Mm-hmm. You know, I know what you're capable of. You know, and, and if and if you don't and if you don't stop putting boxes on, like she doesn't say this in the teaser, but like if you don't put, stop, put, I'm gonna make you, I'm gonna make you strong. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's that whole like, okay, now it's kind of coming together. Now I'm starting to see what's going on here with this mm-hmm. with this person, this character, this this person that seems like is it's exploiting people's darker sides. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I wonder how she's gonna react to Alicia because Alicia's not gonna show any quarter. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. with her, she's gonna. I mean, if Alicia came and taught you know, right in person with the Filthy lady, it's over. Like mm-hmm. Morgan is going to try to save her, but Alicia's not. Mm-hmm. As we saw from like the end of um, Close Your Eyes, she's kind of not on on board with the hopeful train. Like she's leaving mm-hmm. that to Charlie, but you know she's kind of in kill mode. She's kind of in kill mode like Morgan. Mm-hmm. It's not going to get any better. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that does kind of leave us with Strand and Dory. Strandori, as I like to call them. Mm-hmm. They leave me strandoriented. Mm-hmm. So, um, what's okay? So, right from the jump of the episode, okay. So, something you don't know about about what I do when I watch it the second time is I like to put the captions on. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you watched this episode's captions, but uh, the first thing that you see, the first words are squawking, because the first thing you hear is that bird that sounds like oh, kind of like an alarm okay. clock, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it happens throughout the episode, like squawking again, squawking continues. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of cool because it's like us. Oh yeah, that's the, true. There the you go. Crackle. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but we we open up to that scene with Strand in the um, the Rangers hut, mm-hmm. and he's reading Moby Dick. The, you remember Moby Dick, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what do we see in the middle of the episode? Or you know, the, I guess it is in the middle, but yeah, in the uh, in the flooded channel. In the flooded channel. Moby Dick, flooded channel. What do we see? Kind of a teaser. I'll give you a hint. Mm-hmm. Was it the alligator? Or was <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yeah, because I was gonna say it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't that. It's like yeah. I could have sworn it was like an alligator or a crocodile. It definitely wasn't Jaws, and it definitely no. wasn't Moby Dick. But it's no. kind of you. Kind of get like a sense that I you feel think like it was related. I think they're gonna tie it in somehow because they're not gonna stay on that island. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Saran's gonna get his white whale. I, I think they're gonna find a way to kind of because I mean he's reading the book in the in the in the hut. And um, and then there's this alligator, and there, it's not going to be a situation where they're not going to kind of tie this in somehow. Like Strand's going to find a way to kind of overcome something and treat this thing. Like, and you know, maybe he'll die in the pursuit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm not looking forward to that possibility. Because mm. like, just like Ahab and the whale. I mean, Ahab got his whale, but not without losing himself. So I'm I'm feeling a little apprehensive about the connections between these two things. But I, I, you know, it's kind of like foreshadowing. You know, it's there. I mean, he even mentions it himself. Like, I got, my, I got my white, I have my white whale. I have, you know, my food. I'm good. You know, mm-hmm. 
and he says something very interesting about you know you know like it, it's time to stop being foolish you know yeah uh, you know like you know I you know I took risks you know especially my last risk being you know looking for the very thing the person that was the instrument of uh, the last safe place's demise mm -hmm. you know what I mean like Charlie and and it, and he says something right before he goes from John and he says how cute that you even consider tomorrow or the next day the concept of tomorrow or the next day mm -hmm. like he's just done mm -hmm. you know, he can't he he doesn't think about running out of food and and surviving and reconnecting with people he's just done this is it this is where I'm staying Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. it's these just two uh, opposing forces, like waiting for Godot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> like, like wh how how do they get out of this? I mean, like, okay, think about like all the friends that you have in your life, and you, have you ever been? And like, literally, I, I have this one person in mind from when I was in high school. Like this dude, as much as he wanted to keep hanging out with me, he would always bring me the fuck down. <laughs> Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like you have that friend that's so negative mm -hmm. and yet still wants to be around you and, and like suck all like the goodwill out of you to mm -hmm. the point where you have to break up with your friend. Yeah, it, it happens. Strand. <laughs> well, I mean, he's over dramatic, so I would be kind of over it. You know, I would be sort of like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I mean, but that's the thing. Like, how do you like and but when you're that kind of person and there's nobody left almost, you know, and you're kind of stuck with him. It's kind yeah, of like, no, you're kind of stuck. Yeah. Like, what do you do? You just leave him there. You know, I mean, you would and he was going to when he was going to say, I'll, I'll bring I'll bring a boat back, a legitimate boat. And, mm -hmm. and but like still. You're kind of like, you know, what's the point? Like, I mean, he's just going to drag you down is what I'm saying. Right. So it's, it's, I mean, you could kind of tell that this was going to happen. Like whatever happens at the end of the episode, like with John. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's injured. He doesn't really have a choice. He kind of has to rely on Stran. Yeah. So it's like, he's just kind of, you know, he's trying to like motivate himself to get Stran to help him save mm -hmm. himself. If mm -hmm. not just for himself, not for both of them. Mm -hmm. It's a tough ask, and it's like asking him to kind of believe beyond hope, mm -hmm. you know. So it, it it's really frustrating. Like a lot of this episode's kind of like wait and see. It's kind of entertaining. It's kind of interesting to kind of kind of see what these guys are going to reveal about themselves, you know, like really quickly shooting back and forth. You know, like oh, you, you know, you gave me a gut shot. Okay, fine, I'll help you. Mm -hmm. And but the most interesting thing is is like obviously it's funny when when John kind of tests the wrath and it kind of sinks a little bit. But the, the most interesting thing is what happens with the car that they find. You know, like John basically gets the idea to use the camper shell as a boat, bring mm -hmm. it up together, try to make it work, whatever. But when Strand goes up, because obviously John is too injured to get it, to do it himself, and the thing is teetering too precariously on the cliff where it's situated, mm -hmm. Strand goes up. And the thing that I was really disappointed about, and I don't blame Coleman Domingo because I don't think he kind of, you know, it's been months since since he probably filmed that one scene. Mm -hmm. But the bottle that he sees on the passenger side of his best friend's ride, <laughs> the passenger side of the actual vehicle, the whiskey mm -hmm. bottle, mm -hmm. is the Lagavulin bottle. Now, if you remember what I told you uh, in several episode, episodes ago when we were introduced to Naomi, and mm -hmm. Naomi Strand and Madison were heading towards the FEMA Center, mm -hmm. there was one thing that I said about that there was a story that Strand talks about with Madison, mm -hmm. and, and it was the Lagavulin factory that they find, it, you know, sometime between the dam and when they find the stadium. Now, what he mentions is that the Lagavulin factory is, is like, like Madison and him find it and then they just kind of go ham uh, mm -hmm. in the factory. And he's like, like he remembers it fondly. So when he sees that bottle, it's not just a bottle. It's not just alcohol. It's Madison. And he kind of, he, he expresses it in the episode. He's like, you think this is just, you think it's just me be, being, dr you know, getting drunk, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, and he's like, fuck out of here. You know, like you don't, you don't understand anything. Mm-hmm. And and when I when I I didn't see the bottle label the first shoot mm -hmm. I saw talk you know like I watched the episode I, I saw Talking Dead he was like oh the whiskey oh he misses Madison and I got that mm -hmm. but when I actually read the label on the second viewing I'm like oh okay, I need to pay attention to this because you know is this the same whiskey distillery that they find you know sometime between the, this and there mm -hmm. and when I saw that I'm like oh shit okay I get it I get it even more now because mm -hmm. when he sees that he can't help himself mm -hmm. he's drinking to forget. And not only that, he finds the one whiskey that they share together the, from the factory that they found in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, I get it. Like, because you and me are watching that scene and you're like, get the fuck out of here. What do you need that fucking bottle for? Just help John mm -hmm. out and you can get it when the thing crashes. Mm -hmm. But he, it's that specific brand of whiskey. That, and 
I could easily see I just I wouldn't be able to help myself like I would want any tether and like look at Althea look at Althea and Naomi like I'd want any tether to the people that I knew I don't want mm-hmm. any you know like the Cole Carroll um, scenario that I brought up I would want any tether to the people that I, I missed mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I loved so like I it just how powerful that is and then when he finally goes into that um, he goes into it with John he says he like I drink to forget you know right. I, I uh, what does he say exactly um he says, oh, wait, I missed it. Um, yeah, that I'm drinking alone, you know, that I'm lonely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, he does say that. Oh, yeah, I see it now. Hold on a second. Uh, okay, yeah, and he says, oh, yeah, I drink to forget that I don't have anything, to, anyone to drink with anymore. And mm-hmm. this specifically references Madison. And then, you know, he says, John says, and this kind of like, you know, it kind of made me feel something. He was like, John says, you know, well, I'll drink with you, but over there. Mm-hmm. You know, just to kind of like celebrate, let's say. Mm-hmm. And, um, and and it gets Strand to kind of wake up just enough to kind of be a little bit motivated to see John's plan. And, mm-hmm. and I was kind mm-hmm. of like, well, this could work. You know, this could this could get him out of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, the one note that I wrote is like that it took Strand this long to get to the point where he could save people. Right. Like Strand was conniving, mm-hmm. self-centered, you know, and, and thought of himself first and then you know, okay, if I can save Madison and Nick and Alicia, like, okay, you know, I'll include them in my plan. You know, my, you know, I won't even run it by them. This is my plan. I'll do this. I'm used to this. You know, I'll save them my way, you know, mm-hmm. instead of involving them. Mm-hmm. But getting to this point where he's a good person, where he's a person worth saving, that took a long time. That took a lot of effort. And even like confronting Cole that one time about the truck, kind of owning up to it. And then like having his moment saving quote unquote Naomi. And mm-hmm. saying, you know, and then saving Alicia at the end where, you know, when she sacrifice, when he sacrifices his, his, hand, his burnt hand, you know, he still wears the glove. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just like, it's too much to bear. You know, losing Madison was just too much. Losing Madison, losing Nick right afterwards, like failing Madison by, by losing Nick just after mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. It's a blow. It's just too hard to bear. It's like, you know, you, you get to the, you get these characters and you, you, you almost force them to kind of find their way and then Mm -hmm. when you kind of destroy them how easy it is to kind of flex back to their original position Mm -hmm. to be the people that they were so i don't know it's just kind of something that i focus on like i to appreciate the like the gravity of his loss Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know and and how he can't even register this the sweetness of john dory throughout the episode like the hopefulness and you know it just it he doesn't have the receptors for it Mm -hmm. he's Mm -hmm. lost them so I don't know. It's just something that I kind of, I kind of just been as I kind of rewatch the show. It's kind of like you, you kind of have to appreciate that to kind of understand where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. So when they're when John Dory's boat kind of fails and he drops the paddle and the, the alligator kind of bumps the boat and it starts leaking and 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 Strand just gives up. It's over. You know, it forces D- John Dory's hand and John Dory decides to come back. Mm-hmm. And that one defeated, like, what did you feel when, when you saw John eat the candy at the end? Mm-hmm. Comfort. Comfort. Oh, so you saw comfort. Like, you, you didn't see, like, him losing hope. I mean, I think that that was his source of comfort in feeling, in looking at a helpless situation or a hopeless, a potentially hopeless situation. Like, I, I, I'm kind of like rubbing ointment on a wound. Right, yeah. right. That's interesting because I didn't, th- I wasn't thinking that. I was just kind of like thinking, I, you know, what's the point, you know? And, and the, it's, it's something that like, that Garrett Dillahunt says like in one of those cut scenes in Talking Dead. Mm-hmm. He, go, he goes, I bet it doesn't taste that good. You know, he mm-hmm. says he's to the effect of like, okay, you know, it's kind of like, you know, when you do it and you're kind of just medicating, mm-hmm. like you have that little pint of ice cream, mm-hmm. but then you really don't, it doesn't feel as good, you know, when right. you're feeling sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, it's kind of like the same thing. It's kind of, you know. Like he needs it. He needs like maybe he does need that comfort, but it, it just it doesn't do what he it, he expects it to do. Mm-hmm. You know. But by the way, also like I know that Chris Hardwick was kind of referring to the candies like black licorice. By the way, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it wasn't. As he unwraps it, I realized Is it that caramel. Well, that's the thing. Do you remember the thing that he was making with Laura in the cabin? How he melts the toffees and the other candies and makes his special blackjack candy? Mm. So he did that, made it into like something that he could wrap, you know, wrap into, you know, wrap mm-hmm. into individual things. And he's been giving that to everybody. Mm. Basically his own like special blend of love. Like the thing that he made with Laura, mm-hmm. like the, the, the toffee and the, all these different candies that he puts in a pan. Then he just wraps them up again and gives them to people he loves. Mm. 
Interesting. Yeah, right? His special mm-hmm. candy. A special mm-hmm. blend of candy. Mm-hmm. So John Dory's love. And then, by the way, when I realized that, I immediately flashed to Simon Og and Sorghum Pancakes. And, like, I'm going to put a little love in your belly, Xander. <laughs> Him. Yeah, same here. So, like, I mean, I, it was kind of like, okay, I needed that a little bit, but also, okay, this is pretty serious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, so there is a, the whole story with Polar Bear, and we really do find out um, who he is, because I was kind of confused about that. Who that it Was it Purvis? Was it this guy? It seems to me like the guy that they stole the truck from is Polar Bear, um, not Purvis. Purvis seems to be some random dude. I don't know who it is, but uh, I, and maybe we will never understand, or maybe we will understand what seems to be a flashback in the next episode. Mm-hmm. And you can tell it's a flashback because it's uh, the warmer color tones mm. in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And I think we're going to understand who Purvis is, who Polar Bear is, and probably a whole bunch of other people that in the benevolent... It seems to be like... It has to be that the filthy woman knows and has destroyed this benevolent trucker society. Mm-hmm. Because um, knowing who Polar Bear is, he was the guy that left the boxes on the side of the road. He was the one helping people, writing the maps, writing the journals. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Polar Bear, I, I'm trying to figure out if it was the filthy woman that was on the radio at the truck stop. Take what you need. You know, told Morgan to take what you need. Mm-hmm. That whole thing. Or mm-hmm. if it was just some random woman from this society. But I think he was the only one left. So it has mm-hmm. to be the filthy woman. Mm-hmm. So I think we've kind of closed the loop on that a little bit, but now with this backstory, it'll kind of fill in the, like, in between the lines. Mm-hmm. Like, like okay, now we know that this is kind of full circle. We found Polar Bear. We, we put him, Lucy puts him to rest really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's kind of like, we, un- we need to understand where this woman comes from, you know, who is she? Mm-hmm. You know, where does she fit in, in this puzzle piece? And then what is she going to do? You know, and, and it seems like in the next episode, we're going to get a little bit of that, you know, and, and it's funny how the boxes kind of fix, you know, the boxes that this guy leaves is like the very thing that gives him the last bit of comfort mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before he goes. And then in return, she gets these journals, she gets the story, like the fact that they can close that loop is kind of freakish, mm-hmm. finding this guy in the middle of nowhere. And by the way, finding him as a result of trying to find Charles. Mm -hmm. Like you go off the quest to just find one thing and then you find out a whole other thing that kind of connects to another thing. And then Mm -hmm. you get this whole kind of it's it's kind of like pieces of a puzzle. Like when you're actually literally doing a jigsaw puzzle, Mm -hmm. you get that one piece in the middle and then you kind of try to figure out all the other pieces around it. And then eventually you find the connecting pieces. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what's going on here. I mean, as unsettled as I am to not know where this is going to go, it's starting Mm -hmm. to make sense now. Mm hmm. So we kind of have a sense of where this is going to go. Um, Oh, and the one thing, okay, the one thing that I kind of noticed in the sneak peek for next week is that the filthy woman kills this woman who's looking at these boxes. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so there's this woman on the side of the road looking at one of these care boxes that obviously the polar bear leaves or maybe this trucker society, whatever it is. Mm Mm-hmm. And the filthy woman just nails her right in the neck, kind Mm -hmm. of like... um, the way Morgan did in, in clear, or not Henry. clear. Um, or Henry was, did. Here is not here. Oh yeah, but I thought it, was, it felt like more like Henry. That too. That's true. You know, killing um, what's his name? Oh, what was his? Oh, I forgot his name. Uh, Jared. What was that? Jared. Jared. No, not Jared. Jared was killed, torn apart by Walker. Oh, that's right. That's right. Henry Gavin. kills Gavin. Gavin. Yes, right, right in the Gavin. neck. She does the same thing with a bow staff mm-hmm. in this woman's neck. And I have to wonder, like, is there a connection here? Like, I, like I'm trying to figure out if, if there are more similarities than we think there are well, between Morgan and this filthy woman. Like, she obviously knows how to use that. Mm-hmm. So, I just, I'm, like, really concerned <laughs> here. Like, and, and it seems like the, the, they're almost kind of painting polar bear as kind of, like, being, like, an angel and this woman being the devil in a weird way. Like... The angel drops little care packages like Santa Claus, mm-hmm. like Polar Bear in the North Pole. And we don't know the filthy woman's name, but we know that she's filthy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of like a de- you know devil in the Garden of Eden kind of thing. You know, like mm-hmm. just walking around, mm-hmm. fucking shit up. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. There's there's kind of that going on right now. But I, I don't know. Like, there's so many ways to look at this. Like, between the Wizard of Oz imagery and the angel and the devil imagery. And then, like, also <laughs> John Dory and Strand and the whole... 
kind of like angel on your shoulder, devil on your shoulder, hope for optimism versus pessimism or nihilism almost. Or what was the what was the other thing? Oh, uh, existentialism, just like the here and now. Mm-hmm. So you got all, you have all these kind of like representations of where we are. I mean, like Alicia, survival, Charlie, um, doing things the Madison way. You know, what would I want if I was separated from the people that I love? I want a photo. So all these little things, um, like little paragons of virtue. You know, people are taking these these roles on. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay. So I mean, I think that's a good place to leave off. Because, yeah. um, because I mean, it really, I, it's kind of a matter of kind of looking forward to, to seeing, now that we see the scene where Morgan, where the filthy woman kind of takes out all our people on the truck. And we have most of the people on the truck. You got Lucy, um, you got June, uh, uh, Sarah, Wendell, Jim, Morgan, Althea. You've got most of the people on there. In the next episode, you, see, you do see Charlie and Alicia kind of get into a little bit of weirdness because they're trying to find them and they kind of have different ideas about going about it. Mm-hmm. You do see instances where Wendell kind of has somewhat of a drop on the filthy woman, but something must happen to her, uh, to him, and I don't know if they end up getting her. Uh, and then you also have Strand and Dory, and what's going to happen with them. We have no clue. There is mm-hmm. no indicator of what's going to happen there. Mm-hmm. So it kind of remains to be seen. What's, but the good news is that we do have more of a handle on who this filthy woman is, what she's capable of. The only question is right now is whether Morgan is really going to be able to is well going to be able to bring her back, but really if he's going to try now after all of this. So, yeah, I don't know, but at least we don't have to kind of sit in this kind of what's going to happen next. What this what is this back half going to revolve around? But maybe it's going to be more than we even realize. So I think with that, uh, let's call it an evening, and uh, looking forward to you guys next week. Sounds like a plan. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Sunday. See ya.